Hello. Um, okay, so I chose to do my paper on Wilson's disease, which is an autosomal recessive disease where excess copper deposits into the body and into the um, its tissues. Uh, it is affecting the chromosomal 13 mutation on the ATB7, ATB7B chromosome. Um, and this basically inhibits the removal of excessive copper in the liver. Um, the presentation typically is the liver in 40% of patients, neurological in 50% of patients, and then psychiatric in another 10% of patients. So it really comes down to the liver's inability to excrete copper. Um, the copper will accumulate and eventually cause liver cirrhosis and um, the liver will basically shut down. Um, so when you present with Wilson's disease to a general practitioner, um, they will do a regular CBC and look for abnormalities and that will not show up. Uh, you have to do a liver biopsy typically or see an ophthalmologist to look in the iris of the eye to see a, a ring around the iris that is deposits of copper in the eyes. Uh, that's the gold standard. The um, serum copper when doing a blood work will typically be low uh, with, with Wilson's disease. Um, when copper gets into the central nervous system, you can develop brain problems such as coordination, concentration, depression, and psychosis. Uh, these are kind of vague symptoms, whereas if you present um, in psychiatry with these symptoms, they will not first think it's Wilson's disease. Um, this is really only 10% of patients. Um, with neurological um, Wilson's disease, it will cause coordination issues, and that will be looked for if you go to a neurologist. Um, a neurologist would be able to pinpoint. So about 80% of the time, um, liver and neurological, and then psychosis and psychotic traits would be 10% of the time. Um, so the Kaiser Fleischer ring for diagnostic testing, um, so it will be deposits on the corneal membrane of the eye. Uh, and the gold standard would be doing a slit lamp examination, and that's the proper assessment, even though without doing the slit lamp assessment, you can see it just with the naked eye. Um, and this is also common when you have cirrhosis of the liver to have yellowing of the eyes. However, with Wilson's disease, the copper actually presents differently around the iris and has more of a ring type presentation. Um, other features would be things like hemolytic anemia, um, and usually liver transplants will cure Wilson's disease um, and is a great option. However, that's not always available. Um, you have to wait a long time. So yeah, there are medications you can take that basically work by chelating excess copper out of the body. Um, penicillamine and triantine, these are medications that will remove excess copper from the blood um, and help with your symptoms. Um, so in terms of diagnostic testing, um, the, the first thing they will probably do, which is the cheapest way, but not really the gold standard, it's pretty nonspecific because things like cancer um, can give you a false positive, but serum copper levels, um, that would be number one. Uh, number two would be a liver biopsy which is pretty invasive, but that is the gold standard. So seeing a hepatologist and doing a liver biopsy would give you an accurate diagnosis of Wilson's disease. And number three is a 24 hour urine copper assay. This is not the gold standard. This would probably be the last, um, last way to diagnose it. And like I said, chelation agents are used. And in terms of diet dietary restrictions, which is really where we come into play, if somebody presents to us with Wilson's disease, um, it's making sure they're following up with their providers to, to make sure they're taking proper medications, as well as avoiding foods like lamb, pork, duck, scallops, lobster, and crab. These foods contain high amounts of copper um, and can exacerbate the issue. Also, vegetable juices, vegetable juice cocktail, mushrooms, um, anything that's fortified with things like copper because it is like an essential nutrient. Um, instant breakfast beverages, 
vegan substituted foods. Vegan substituted foods do have high amounts of copper in them and um, should be avoided. Things that are safe would be eggs, um, white meat, turkey, and chicken, rice, butter, apples, and most fruits and some vegetables minus mushrooms are all approved. But um, I always found with Wilson's disease really interesting. I know somebody who actually fermented vegetables in a rusty copper container um, and they absorbed too much copper from these and presented with something that looked like Wilson's disease. So this is something that's always been interesting and my paper explains more on this.